Hello and welcome to part three of the Toolbox project where we're going to begin cutting these dovetails out. Let's get going. Okay, so in this video, we're going to be doing the sawing of the dovetails and also the chiseling of the baselines all in one video. Whereas in previous series, we have broken this step down into two individual videos. So again, as always, if you feel we've glossed over a few bits, go back and watch those videos. It's also worth saying at this point that we are not going to be doing anything with the mitres. And the reason for this is we've got quite a few steps between now and assembling the box. And so if we've got these fragile mitres sitting on either end, there's gonna be a much higher chance of us accidentally whacking them on something and damaging the joint. So we're not gonna cut those out until we absolutely have to. So this is the setup I'm going for in terms of work holding. Nice and low in the vise getting a sliding dead man across and we're going to keep both sides of the component fully supported. I understand that not everyone has this beautiful setup I have here. The main thing to take from this is just ensure that whatever area you're working on is fully supported. If you're using a quick release that might involve clamping it on the right hand side of the vise and then the left hand side. If you've got a twin screw vise that is able to accommodate the whole thing, brilliant, but that's the main thing to take from this. Just make sure that it's not going to vibrate at all while cutting these tails because it's quite thick material. So my method for doing this is to establish the top line with a saw first and then once we've got that established focus on the one going down as opposed to trying to hit both of them at once. So in practice it looks like this. We're going to angle the saw up and nibble away at the back edge of the component. That's now the top established. Now that I can lock my saw into that cut, all I've got to do is focus on cutting down completely vertical, at least for these end ones. Obviously with a dovetail we're going to have to angle it somewhat. Same again for the other side, nibble away at the back edge and then just track that line from back to front. And then once it's established on top, as for the dovetails, these are a little bit trickier to get your head round. Best way to do it is put the saw on the line flat, angle it to match the tail and then just tilt it up slightly. That way you're at the perfect angle to take off the back edge. Then once you flat along the top and it's established, Next we can focus on removing the waste and I do that with a fret saw, getting as close to the line as I dare. And here's a quick tip for you regarding clearing the waste in large case sites like this. It's a little bit obsolete in this case because I can just cut from left to right instead of right to left. But let's say you've got a side that's too wide to fit your saw in and therefore you can't actually cut properly horizontally. In a lot of cases, people will resort to one of two things. The first one is fitting a spiral cut blade in their coping saw or fret saw so they can go down and then cut horizontally like this. It's a good way of doing it, but you've just got to go out and buy a blade and wait for delivery and all that. The second option is to buy one of these saws that has a pivoting blade on it. A lot of coping saws have that functionality built in. New concepts who make this saw have a higher spec design that has that built into it. However, in this case, it has neither of those. I've got a standard blade on here and just the cheapest fret saw that new concepts do. So how would we get around that if I couldn't fit this case side within the frame? Well, it involves the use of pliers and no, it is not bending the frame up to get clearance. It's actually twisting the blade. This is a technique I learned from Chris Schwarz on a short course I did with him like back when I started woodworking. But you actually bend the blade itself. You gotta be careful, obviously, that you don't completely overdo it. But that blade now has a twist on it. So I can go in like this, I can make that turn. And now I'm cutting horizontal with the frame up here. It's great, isn't it? No need to buy the next spec up from this. No need to wait for spiral cut blades. You just bend it with pliers. Brilliant. The added benefit is I'm also better at cutting from right to left than the other ways. I'm not entirely sure why, but hey, who cares? Okay. 
Okay, so the next stage is going to be chiseling out the waste down to the baseline. And I haven't said this before, but I would always recommend using eye protection for this, just in case you get some rogue end grain come out, ping off your hand and hit you in the eye. It has happened to me before. So yeah, just chuck them on, it won't do any harm. The way we're going to be doing this is by sighting along the line so we can see if the chisel is going in perpendicular or not. And we're actually gonna be using a variety of chisels to clear out the waste here. This is a little trick I shared in a previous video, how to chisel correctly, and it works really well for when we've got lots of sockets to clear out. So what we're gonna do is use these narrow chisels to clear out the majority of the waste and get it to within about half a millimeter of the line. We're gonna be working down to halfway from either side to meet in the middle. And then when we do that final chop on the baseline, we're going to swap to as wide of a chisel as we can fit in there, which in this case, it's not quite that one, so it's going to be this one. This means that the chisel responsible for that final cut is gonna require less resharpenings throughout this process because it's not going to be responsible for clearing out the majority of the waste. So I'll start with this middle socket. I'm gonna go for my quarter inch chisel first, remove half the waste down to halfway, remove half of that again, get into the corners, and then we keep this one for the final chop. So that then goes into the shoulder line, down to halfway, and that's it. We just repeat that process throughout. This one stays nice and sharp. This one gets a little bit of a battering, but because it's narrower, it can penetrate deeper and easier. You, you know, you could even swap to an even thinner one if you really want to. But I find that's a really good way to prolong sharpness on chisels and also speed up the process somewhat as well. So a little bit closer up this time, narrow chisel, removing half the waste and only going down halfway. Keep removing half of it, a bit closer. And then for that final chop, Chisel goes into the line, right into the corners, and down to halfway. So then if we just break away this stuff in the middle, you can see that I've sort of stopped around about halfway. If you go all the way through, then you don't know what's happening on the other side and you'll probably end up undercutting it. So it's important we stop around there, flip it over and work again from the other side. Also, when you're doing this, ensure that you're clearing out the chips from underneath the component as you're chiseling down into it. The last thing you want is for when you're chiseling, it to be rocking all over the place. Not only is it somewhat unsafe and inaccurate, but you're also losing a lot of power transfer with your chisel every time this ricochets off one of those shavings. Whereas if it's planted on the bench, you're gonna get much more bang for your buck with a chisel. Right, I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so the next step is to do the final cleanup between each of these tails. So I have just freshly sharpened my chisel, but it's important to keep in mind here that all we're doing at this point is just removing little slithers of material just to refine that joint. We're not gonna be doing any heavy material removal while the piece is clamped up like this. If you're having to use a mallet to clear out stuff while it's like this, it's gonna start deflecting all over the place. You're not gonna get a lot of control and all that. Do it vertically into the bench like we did previously if you find yourself in that position. This is purely just for cleaning out little wispy bits here and there. And this is the sort of thing I'm always looking for. So what we're gonna do is rest the chisel on top of the baseline, not coming in from the front, on top, slightly angle it in and just undercut that rubbish there. Maybe get it up on its side like this. And just very lightly peel it away. That is what we're looking to remove at this stage. And as always, of course, we're working through to halfway. We'll flip it round and do the other side afterwards. All right, and there you go, that is the tails done. So in the next one, we're going to focus on transferring those tails to the pins and also getting them cut out all in one video. So as always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do not forget to press the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next lesson.